In this tutorial, we are going to review how one selects the fluorescent excitation and emission filters that are used when conducting standard fluorescent imaging in a LogOX, MEHTX, or Kino system. Now, what you can see in the image off to the left here is that we have an example of fluorescent imaging in a LOGO system where mice were previously challenged, as indicated by the annotation here, with Osteosense 750. Osteosense 750 is a near-infrared fluorescent probe that binds to the growth plate in mice. And what you can also see here in the annotation is that an excite filter of 745 nanometer and an emission filter of 810 nanometer were selected for the purposes of generating the image. So the central question by way of example here that we are going to address in this tutorial is how was it that the 745 and A10 nanometer excite and emit filters were selected for this particular image? On what basis was this the right decision? All right, so let's proceed with a basic background on what optical imaging is and specifically what bioluminescence and fluorescent imaging are so that we can address this question of excitation and emission filter selection for fluorescence imaging. Optical imaging is essentially the detection of visible light photons. Bioluminescence optical imaging is the detection of visible light photons generated by enzymes, typically luciferases such as firefly luciferase. And it is important to realize that these enzymes are active only in the cytosol of living cells where they have access to cellular ATP and oxygen, and of course, their substrate, deluciferin in the case of firefly luciferase. Now the generation of light by fluorescence happens by a very different mechanism. Fluorescent light is essentially the process of molecular electron excitation and relaxation, where excitation is caused by an external light source and relaxation results in emitted light. Now the optical photons from bioluminescence or fluorescence can be readily detected and captured by cool CCD camera systems. The incoming photons are captured on the sensor of the camera system as electrons, and these electrons are then read off the sensor and processed through the algorithms of a software platform and are finally visualized for the purpose of evaluation by the investigator. Now remember, in this tutorial, our focal point is to review how to select fluorescent excitation and emission filters for the purposes of optimizing fluorescent images when acquiring them through standard fluorescent imaging techniques on your LogOX, Amy HTX, and Kino systems. Now here's the trick. The Stoke shift, or the distance between the absorption and emission maxima of floor floors, commercial floor floors that are available to you, typically it's on the order of 25 nanometer. Now this distance is 10 nanometers narrower than the minimum distance allowed between our excite and emission filters. So the question before us is, given that you will have typically a 25 nanometer stoke shift, how does one select the LED excite filter and the emission filter so that you capture as much of each spectra. In the case of the absorption spectra, you want to capture as much as you can to cause maximum excitation of your fluorophore. And in the case of the emission spectra, you want to capture as much of that to get as many photons as possible from your fluorophore. All right, so the general answer is that you want to stagger slightly to the left of maxima for the absorption spectrum with your selection of the excite LED filter and slightly to the right of the maximum of the emission filter in the selection of your emission filter. Now, taking those general guidelines in mind, let's go ahead and look at an example. So here are the absorption and emission spectra of a very popular fluorophore, Alexafluor 680. And you can see that it has absorption and emission maxima at 680 nanometer and 704 nanometer, respectively, which amounts to a 24 nanometer stoke shift. Typical. Now, what LED excite filter and emission filter combination should we use to go ahead and capture as much of the absorption and emission spectra 
as we can. Well, as previously suggested, let's select an LED excite filter that is slightly to the left of the absorption maximum and an emission filter that is slightly to the right of the emission maximum. On this slide, I have provided the list of LEDs and emission filters that would be available to us were we working with a Log OX by way of example. To aim slightly to the left of 680, one can see that the 675 LED excite filter uh, is available to us. And to aim a little bit to the right of the emission maximum, one could select the 710 emission filter. Now, here's the good thing. First of all, you can see that there is a distance of 35 nanometer between the center point of this excitation and emission filter pair. And two is, is that they both neatly capture a good fraction of the absorption and emission spectra for the Alexa 4680 probe. So in summary, this is the process in general and here specifically, how one goes about selecting excitation and emission filter pairs when conducting standard fluorescent image captures in an SI imaging system. Here's to great imaging. 